All right, so for this first section, we're going to be looking at wireless technology used to connect devices to a network. For the second part, it's going to be wireless technology used to connect devices to other devices. Okay, so maybe a phone to a phone, headphones to headphones. And the first part again is going to be my phone to my home network, for example. So first and foremost, we have the infamous Wi-Fi. So let's quickly run through this list. So it's convenient. You can access it from multiple locations. You don't have to be stuck in one place. That goes directly into mobility. So I'm going to skip mobility. Productivity. Imagine you're in an office and you need to work in the first floor on Monday. Then on Tuesday, you need to go to the second floor. So you don't have to sit in one location and constantly go back and forth to use a computer. You can go wherever you want. I guess that kind of links into mobility as well. Deployment. In most cases, you don't need more than one single Wi-Fi router for dozen, two dozen, three dozen people at the same time. Now, the more people connected to the same Wi-Fi um, router, it will slow it down because the bandwidth has to be shared for everyone. However, very convenient. Uh, expandability. Again, normally you start with one, but if you did need to add more people to the network, you can add more Wi-Fi hotspots or you can add more Wi-Fi range extenders. And the cost, very cheap, very, very cheap. Normally, most houses only have one router, one Wi-Fi box, right? And because people use wireless, they don't have to buy cables for every single device. So it, just imagine this, right? A household of, I don't know, three or four people, mom, dad, brother, sister. Everybody has their own mobile phone, their own laptop, their own TV, their own Xbox, their own PlayStation. And every single one of those devices has to be plugged in via cable. So that would mean mom and dad would have to buy, um, what did I say, 16 Ethernet cables roughly. Whereas with Wi-Fi, all 16 devices can be connected to that one router without any issues, without any cables running around the house, without any safety hazards, essentially. So we do also have some disadvantages of Wi-Fi. And the main one is going to be security. Now, there are ways to limit this, but because the main one is security, it comes in the form of your Wi-Fi network. Well, most people have their Wi-Fi network constantly being broadcasted, meaning people who are not on your network can actually see your network if they went on to their mobile phone and they scan for the network, right? They can actually see it. And because they can see it, in many cases, it can be hacked. People don't put passwords on or the password's too weak or somebody knows how to get around that feature, right? The range. Wi-Fi tends to be maybe up to 30 meters-ish, so roughly 90, 100 feet, and that's really good Wi-Fi. So the range isn't really great, but again, very convenient. Reliability is another one. It isn't normally very reliable because it can be easily interfered with. Now, Wi-Fi normally tends to be interfered with, for example, by stuff like really thick concrete, um, uh, metal, glass, other radio waves from stuff like your microwave, for example, very easy to actually disrupt Wi-Fi. Speeds, I mean, it says speed here, but again, newer technology has actually improved this quite a bit. For example, Wi-Fi 6, if I'm not mistaken, goes up to and beyond one gigabyte per second. However, typically speaking, most people have devices on Wi-Fi that go between, I would say, 20 to 200 megabytes per second, still very quick. But compared to cable on the same network, cable is normally going to be faster. So your Ethernet cable is normally going to be more far, is um, faster, more reliable, in most cases give better range, but you do have that cable running around the house and more secure because for someone to actually hack your Ethernet cable, let's say, they would actually actually have to find where the cable is, cut the cable, tap the cable and rejoin it without you noticing. That's a bit more tricky. Now we're on to mobile networks. The book says 3G and 4G, but as most of you might know, we're actually now onto 5G. So I'm just going to speak about mobile networks in general. So this is one of the few things that offer true mobility. Even though Wi-Fi is very convenient and you can move around the house very easily, it doesn't allow much flexibility if you do have to leave the house because the range of Wi-Fi is normally, I would say, within the range of 30 meters, so up to 100 feet, right? Whereas 4G, it goes from miles on miles on end, or mobile data, let's say, goes from miles on end. Um, so it is actually the only one, as I said, that offers true mobility, which is very beneficial. 
it actually provides very, very fast speeds. I was in London recently and I have a 5G phone. I did a speed test and the speed came out to be, I believe, six or 500 megabytes per second. If I do a speed test now on my computer here, I am running broadband at home. This is the speed I get. Now, bear in mind, I do only have 108 megabyte cap for downloads and I believe 10 megabytes for uploads. However, if I were on 5G, um, this is normally uncapped based on the current usage. So I'm on O2, for example. And as I said, when I'm in London, I get ridiculous speeds. But this is my home speed. Not too bad, but much faster for mobile. One of the downsides of having mobile data is that you do sometimes lose reception because you're constantly moving. You're going in, in and out of dead zones and you're using public networks as well. So even though I'm on the O2 network, O2 has a mast or a cell tower somewhere and I keep hopping onto cell towers. So that actually reduces the stability and or quality of the signal being received to my mobile phone. Next, we have satellite broadband. Now, this is not something that's used very much in a built up city like London or New York City. These are used mainly in rural areas where having a cable wired directly to your house is not something that's very practical. It is done here in the UK, out in the countryside mainly. And again, it is mainly for areas that are remote where wiring a cable from, I don't know, the high street might not be very practical. So it does offer wide coverage and high speeds. Next, we have microwave radio communication or a laser, let's say. So you are able, to, as, you, as you can see here, able to transmit large quantities of data, relatively low cost, um, simply because you buy the equipment outright so you don't have to keep paying a monthly price. So whereas us here in the UK, for example, we pay Virgin or O2, TalkTalk, Talk, whichever company you have, and every month you have to pay them, let's just say for argument's sake, between 30 to 60 pounds for your internet. With this, you buy it once and you don't have to pay for it because the communication technology is yours. You can use it for as long as it's compatible with something else. Next, it says disadvantage solid objects. Yes, some solid objects, well, most to be fair, can block microwave or laser communication devices because most of them need some line of sight to actually work. What that means is you actually have to see each device has to be in line of sight to each other for it to work properly. So advantages, again, is high speed and no ongoing costs. However, there is a big upfront cost, a big initial cost. A big startup cost because you have to pay for everything outright and it's affected by poor weather so rain snow wind stuff like that anything that can block it is going to be affected by that and i think more so for laser because it has to be a very very straight direct and accurate beam and if that beam is ever broken at any point then that's going to be an issue now to be fair i haven't seen these questions come up a lot on any of the exam papers i've looked at I will try to get some exam questions done this week. So that's the reason I'm kind of rushing through all of this now. So next we have wireless connection methods for devices. So this is normally how you connect a device to another device, not necessarily a device to a network, but a device to a device. So we have, I would say the second most popular one here, which is Bluetooth. But Wi-Fi is probably the most popular. Bluetooth is second. Not used as much anymore, but still very popular. So it avoids interference from other wireless devices because it uses a different kind of technology, let's say. It has a low power consumption and we can evidence this by the amount of time that your AirPods will last. They are so, so small, so tiny, and they last for hours on end. And your mobile phone is constantly sending information back and forth between, let's say your AirPods, your, your smartwatch, your mobile phone, they're constantly sending data around and they still last for hours easily upgradable so that's very true even if you have let's say um, a very old iphone you can upgrade it is actually possible to upgrade the chip inside most phone well not most phones but most laptops you can actually take the chip outside the laptop and upgrade the bluetooth relatively simple it's just as easy as replacing your hard drive with an ssd actually it has range better than infrared communication that's very true Infrared normally has to be right in front of each other. So when I was a child and I, and I used to send, let's say, music or pictures to my friend's phone, we used to have to stand with our phones pointing right next to each other, maybe centimeters away. 
wasn't very pleasant, but it used to work. Uh, Bluetooth is used for voice and data transfer. I would say mainly for voice. It can be used for data, as I've said. Um, I don't know about um, iOS, but on Android, you can send whatever file you want over Bluetooth to a PC, to another Android device, and it is mainly used for voice. So when you connect your earpods or your wireless headphones to your phone, that's a voice being transmitted. Video isn't normally good for being sent over Bluetooth, but it is possible. It's going to be very, 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 very laggy and not very useful in my opinion. Bluetooth devices are available at a very cheap cost. That's true as well. Very cheap. I can get, I actually bought a pair of Bluetooth headset from a supermarket once for like 15 or 20 pounds. Um, three year warranty. That's on the channel as well, by the way. And they work perfectly fine. So that's the stuff they're covered for Bluetooth. So again, it's for peering over very short distances. So think about your smartwatch, your mice, your keyboards, um, your ear pods. Relatively easy to set up. In most cases, um, with my headphones, I simply had to turn them on and it actually just popped up on my phone saying, this device is in range, would you like to connect? And that was it. Low data transfer speeds. It is very, very slow. That's why I said video isn't really good for Bluetooth because it transmits data extremely slow. And it has a short range, normally shorter than, let's say, Wi-Fi, but better than infrared. So it is greater than infrared and less than Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi Direct is the next thing. Now, Wi-Fi Direct has changed over the years and it's not being used as much. I remember this was a feature on Android phones where you could send files to someone else's Android phone using Wi-Fi. You wouldn't have to use any other service but Wi-Fi. This has changed recently and is not being used as much. So now it's normally being used for connecting devices to remote displays. So linking your phone to your TV screen, which is something I can do where I cast my screen and it goes to my TV and I can see exactly what's on my phone on my TV. It is normally good at transmitting both audio and video, again, because it's using Wi-Fi. So it, it has good enough bandwidth, meaning the amount of data that can go through at any one time. It has decent enough bandwidth, so it can send video and audio. It is normally built into devices. It's, it only you, The only difference is you have a software that allows it. So any Wi-Fi enabled device with the capabilities of, let's say, streaming or casting, it will work. So for me, I have a Google Chromecast I, and I have an Android Smart TV, so I can beam directly from my phone to either one of those devices. Limited range, just like Wi-Fi is. I'm going to say roughly 30 meters ish. And even then, if you're in a house with concrete walls, glass, it's not going to be as good as that. And here it says um, there is normally interference, just like with Wi-Fi, other things in a house can actually interfere with it. Something simple as your microwave going off, um, someone's phone ringing, your phone ringing, because the frequencies are so similar. Now, let me not get into that, but because the frequencies are so similar, um, it can affect the Wi-Fi signal. Right, so we have Wi-Fi again, but Wi-Fi here is used in a slightly different way. So the book here says it allows for ad hoc networks. So what that means is you add, remove, change features as and when you need to. When something is ad hoc, it's not fixed. Now, the benefit of this is that we, we can add stuff like wireless printing, wireless scanning, wireless, I don't know, speakers, anything of the sort, right? It's very simple to set up. So similar to that of, let's say, linking your phone to your wireless router at home, you find a password, you find the name of the wireless service you want to attach it to, and then you simply click connect. Now, my wireless printer at home, that's all I had to do. And then it would show up on all my wireless devices at home. But some of them are a bit more tricky. It uses Wi-Fi that's already there. So let's say I went and bought a new wireless speaker, wireless printer, wireless scanner. I don't have to buy anything else for it to work. It just works with my Wi-Fi router at home straight away. It could even work with something like a mobile hotspot. So if I wanted to give my um, or give my Wi-Fi printer, or my wireless printer, um, access to use my mobile hotspot, I could do that as well. I guess some of the time a downside could be that using an ad hoc network, jumping on and off, changing settings here and there can actually reduce connectivity, can impact, can impact connectivity in the sense that some or most Wi-Fi routers at home, they only allow so many devices to be connected at once. So let's say, let's count this out, right? I, in, in my room now, I have uh, a laptop, 
a tablet, a mobile phone, two mobile phones actually. I've got um, another computer over there. I've got my smart TV. I've got my Xbox, my PlayStation. That's seven items altogether. So other people in my house, normally let's say my um, hotspot can only take up to 12. I've already taken seven devices. So if I then start adding stuff like printers and speakers and random sensors around the house, then that's going to again eat up some of those ports or some of those hotspots I can use. 